All right, my sweaty friends, let's talk baseball. Now, we can all see the game has evolved a lot over the last few years, so much so that some people are starting to ask if the MLB should ban the infield shapeshift. Stats tell us that it's 10 times more common in 2018 for infielders to physically transform into bears, wolves, and jaguars in order to defend against certain hitters than it was five years ago. Sure, a bit of strategic defensive repositioning has always been part of the game, but is turning your shortstop into an eagle so he can snatch balls out of midair in the spirit of the game? Maybe once in a while, but it feels like we're seeing this every other at bat. Granted, that right there is an incredible play by Alex Bregman, but is this what fans want to see? It's easy to say hitters should just push it past the shapeshift, but how are you going to get a ground ball past a Burmese python? Those things cover a lot of ground. Look, I can't tell you how many times in the last couple of years I've seen Albert Pujols hit a scorching line drive right into the mouth of a massive saltwater crocodile. Yeah, and... You can't talk about shape-shifting infielders without talking about Bryce Harper. Bryce's batting average is down to 234 this year, in large part because opposing teams are turning their entire defenses into water buffalo in 59% of his at-bats. As soon as they start to naturally herd together over on the right side where Bryce loves to hit, it feels like an automatic out. But on the other hand, look at Bryce's numbers in the past month or so. He is starting to turn things around and take advantage of the shape-shift partially because he started swinging on the first pitch while infielders are still painfully mid-transformation. So, at the end of the day, my take is shapeshifting isn't new, and it probably isn't going anywhere. I don't love it, but it's just part of the modern game. You've got statisticians in the front office who know what kind of animal is best to defend against every player on an opposing lineup, and nowadays teams spend entire weeks during spring training going on safari and touching animals to acquire their powers. If more hitters like Harper can find a way to adjust, that'll make the game more exciting on both sides. I'm definitely not one of these guys out here calling for the league to make it against the rules, but maybe some small change would work. Like... I don't know if every team could transform into their own mascot creature or something like that, you know, to level the playing field. All right, next up, we're talking rookie quarterbacks, Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold. Who's going to be the first to suck in the CFL? I've said it before, and I'll say it again. You're listening to The Morning Sweat. We're three weeks into the NFL preseason, and I have to ask the same question I've been asking for a few years now. Should the NFL eliminate the offseason altogether? Just think about it. The offseason is meaningless. Nobody likes it. Nothing these guys are doing during the offseason counts towards the standings at all. So why do we have it? You think football fans care about what happens during the offseason? I think it's about time they got rid of it. There's 52 weeks in a year. There should be 52 games in a football season. Plus, when you force these players to take a five-month offseason, you're making them risk their health by doing things that don't matter, like working out, going to the pool. They should be playing football. When's the last time a player's time spent back at home with their family ever actually made an impact on a team's season? Seriously. It never makes a difference. It's just a waste of time, and yet the NFL keeps doing this off-season thing year after year. Frankly, I'm sick of it. And sure, they try to make it fun by adding stuff like the draft and hiring and firing coaches, whatever, but none of that is football games. The draft could still be at the end of April. That works. But it should coincide with the first week of a 13-week postseason that culminates in a July Super Bowl. But will the NFL ever actually make this change? I'm not getting my hopes up. No one ever listens to me. All right, coming up after the break, Tiger Woods is back, but will he be able to lead this year's U.S. Ryder Cup team to a wet-hot orgy? 